Hey everyone. I feel like I just want to do a little impromptu analysis on the short story of Franz Kafka's In the Penal Colony. I read this short story relatively a few relatively recently and there's something about it that has been haunting me for the past few nights. And knowing Kafka, if anyone has ever read anything by him, because I ask this because normally if you ever come across his works, you're pro- you would probably have been, been told to read The Metamorphosis at some point in high school. And I can understand why people would be turned off by his writing style at first when you're in high school because you're not really, let's be honest, you're not worrying about literature or anything very existential when you're in high school. You're more interested in going after girls or, or you know, doing extracurricular activities and hanging out with your friends, so... The thing about Kafka is he was he wrote stories that more more than any other writer in, in his time maybe Dostoevsky in some instances although he was greatly influenced by him was he wrote about characters who were flawed but also characters who f- were treated badly and extremely poorly in in a justice system. You can read his novel The Trial that's another great example, but I'm not here to talk about the trial. This is about in the penal colony, which is a very unnerving and very subtle short story. There are three there are four main characters in it. There's the explorer who's from Western Europe and he's in a penal colony. It's never really described where it is, where it's located, but he's there to observe an officer who is working this machine. This contraption that he constantly throughout the short story is like, oh, this is magnificent. You should look at it. It's so complicated. And isn't it just a great thing? But when he gets into details about it, it's a machine that's that's meant, its teleological end is to inflict torture. The purpose of it is much more sinister. There are three parts to the machine. What's, what's, it's actually called the apparatus for most of the actual story, but there is the bed, which is what the prisoner or person who's convicted of a crime is laid down on, usually on their chest. They are also held stra- by straps. Their legs and their arms are held by straps to keep them from moving. Then there's the designer, which is at the top, which is the part where all the mechanics are set and everything or the gears are all set to work in a particular order and finally there's the harrow which has these spikes that descend and when the prisoner is down the bed starts to vibrate and move but also the harrow moves along with the movements of the bed and what this machine does is it writes and it writes on the on the victim's back his crime what he is guilty of but here is where it gets really messed up. Whenever someone is condemned to face the harrow, you know, the apparatus, they are never told what they're guilty of. In the case of in the penal colony, the condemned man, that's, his, that's simply what he's referred to as, you don't even get any identities outside of their what they are accused of or what their work in the world is, There are four characters, the soldier, the officer, the explorer, and the condemned man. The condemned man, we are told, is guilty for talking back to a superior, for not obeying orders. But the condemned man is not made aware of this. And so, with the contraption meant to spell out what he is guilty of on his back, This comes a great irony and also a great insidiousness. And what that is, is how can someone who is guilty of a crime be convicted if they know not what they are committed for, what they are guilty of? This is as if we were living in society today and if you get arrested for a crime, they never tell you what you are guilty of. And also... Their punishment, their form of judgment on you is something that, in the end, doesn't even, it doesn't even re- rehabilitate you. There's no purpose to it outside of whoever the person in charge feels is the outcome. 
which is actually the worst part of the of the contraption because once the apparatus has finished stamping the needles through your back writing in flesh and blood what you are guilty of the person then dies nine hours later or 12 hours later and then they are supposedly dumped in a pit where they are then buried this short story in many ways is about judgment and the and the human's propensity to want to inflict judgment even when the the purpose of it serves no outcome that is that is either rewarding or even helpful or even meant to mitigate judgments it is merely a means to an end and with this makes the story all the more depressing and make and what actually is the core message of the story because the main character the explorer he is asked by the officer that he should go to the com- the commandant of the island to put in a good word about how the apparatus works that it actually is good for the colony but the explorer denies this to the officer because he actually has he knows that there is no justice to the machine to what it is built for because like i said if the teleological end of the apparatus is to not only put in in through flesh and blood what someone is guilty of like how does it work because the person who's being inflicted upon doesn't even know what they're guilty of it even states throughout the story that the condemned man is not aware of what he's what he's being charged for he's just happened to be in this position and in the end because the explorer doesn't allow, does not say to the officer he, he he essentially says no i will not tell the com- the commandant that this is good that this is actually something we should keep up with and because of this the officer feels that there is a that he essentially has lost and he has such a strange affinity for the machine that because of this he takes the condemned man off of the machine and he puts himself in, in its place instead and here is where the the crucial irony of the story comes out because once he gets into the in place of the bed and he then dies by the machine the soldier and the condemned man do nothing neither does the explorer when he starts the contraption the officer when he starts it on himself they do nothing to stop it so in a way even though the explorer morally is against the end of the contraption and what is and what its purpose is he does nothing to stop it neither does the condemned man to me this is a really really disturbing message that kafka is getting across and what he's getting across in this story is humans seem to not care about setting an example of setting a standard and living by it we are full of hypocrisies especially when it comes to when it comes to the p- inflicting an acts of judgment on other people heck the condemned man when he's watching the officer be killed he's just kind of like oh this is kind of interesting like i'm looking around like look this is kind of cool so in a way not only would a con- would the condemned man have learned anything if he were the one who got his bl- his flesh impaled and then later dies into the pit not only would he not have learned from his past mistake for what he was accused of but neither did he when he was off off of it and when he watched the officer die the soldier and the condemned man learned nothing neither did the officer because he died for what he believed in and the saddest part of the story is at the end when the explorer goes to this tea house and underneath this table very hidden away is a plaque dedicated to the old commandant of the colony and it says that they wished him to rise again the old commandant is mentioned in the short story as the person of uh, was the original leader of the colony who actually was for the apparatus and what it was meant to do so in a sense the people who were living there 
actually do believe in what the apparatus is meant to do, which is to inflict judgment without justice. I think this story in many ways holds relevance for today, because as you all know, when it comes to politics or when it comes to viewing each other's humanity, people love to inflict judgments on other people. They love to accuse other people of any sort of of any sort of idea that they think the other person is guilty of. If you believe in X, Y, or Z, you are automatically condemned to ostracization or even you are also committed and you are also considered guilty by the mere fact that you hold a different position on something. And in the world of Kafka, in the world of the penal colony, judgment is inflicted whenever someone says so. And whoever is the victim has no chance of an apology, of a defense. This is what Socrates died for. Socrates died for setting a defense against accusations and against maltreatment and against slander. But in the world of the penal colony, if you are committed, or not committed, if you are, con- if you are accused of a guilt by of something that you have done then it automatically ends up in the apparatus